Good morning, crafters. We are live on the Carnation Crafts brand page. My name is Hannah Roxbury, and I am the brand ambassador for Carnation Crafts. And this morning's Facebook Live show is dedicated to the wreath card shape from the Full of Love collection. So this was actually um, a request. I think uh, the lady's name was Michelle, so um, apologies if I've got that wrong. Um, but we do have a post running on our Facebook group, Carnation Crafters, where you can hop along and add your requests for demonstrations you'd like to see, which is great because it gives us ideas uh, for upcoming Facebook shows and things like that. Um, as we always do when it comes to Facebook Lives, we will give it a little while just so everyone that wants to join us live can find us and do so and make sure the stream is buffering correctly. I have a little scroll back, see plenty of joining us already. We've got Jacqueline, we have Karen and Fiona. We've also got Patricia and oh, we've got Fiona from the DT. Good morning, Fiona. Thank you for joining us. Um, so as we go through the Facebook show, um, obviously we've got the comments up on the screen in front of me. So if you do have any questions, uh, type them up by all means I will do my very best to answer as we go and basically these kind of shows are an opportunity for you guys to um, see a, a longer demonstration than what we're able to bring you uh, live on air on Create and Craft um, because obviously we're not limited as such by time and things like that. Um, so it just gives us a little bit more um, options really, which is quite fun. And of course, being live on Facebook here, uh, we can interact, which is really, really lovely. So it's your opportunity to ask your questions or ask away. Um, I will be combining this particular card shape with, I'm just looking at the elements in front of me. I've got the uh, Vernal Blooms wreath, which happens to work so beautifully with this card. Uh, we've got some elements from Equinox Blooms. So if you're a fan of USBs, uh, we have got the new USB uh, for the occasion USB launching with Carla this evening at six o'clock. So there's a couple of things from that, which you could then interpret in your own way and use in your own card designs. I've got a few elements from, let's have a look, um, Hedgerow Harvest by the looks of it, another Equinox Blooms uh, die set. We've got, and a few elements from um, Colour of Autumn as well. So although uh, quite a few of the <laughs> collections I've just mentioned are quite autumnal, um, I hope you see when we go through there's lots of different ways of combining these and, and using them as well. Um, I'm going to be using all the layers from the wreath card shape and we're going over the die in detail as well so hopefully it will, it will clear up any queries anyone might have. Uh, Sanel's joined us from Tampa in Florida, good morning Sanel, thank you for joining us, Terry's here as well, Alison, Sheila, Susan and Paul lots of hellos and good mornings i hope the weather's all nice where you are someone else says it's freezing <laughs> do you know what it's freezing here as well it was really sunny yesterday you know those wonderful crisp lovely you know those frosty mornings and you go out and sort of the hedgerows and, and all the spider webs on the hedgerows have like lovely thick frost on them and the sun was streaming through our conservatory it was really cheerful today it's pretty grey so that's kind of depressing but do you know what perfect day for sitting in our craft room and just getting a bit crafty which is lovely i'm going to turn that camera around and we're going to have a look at the die set so here it is it is the wreath card you can see mine is well loved it's got red liner tape uh, carrier sheet on it and all sorts but essentially it creates this wonderful arch shaped card design within this you then have lots and lots of different layers now i think it's really important to know when it comes to carnation crafts you don't have to use everything as is, is set on the card shapes, okay? So it might be that you just take this wonderful, oh, I just chucked the die on the floor. I will retrieve that later. It might be that you take this wonderful sort of circular filigree here and use that as a topper on your seven by seven cards, for example. You know, there's, there's tags within here. There's wonderful sort of flourishes. There's corners. Again, all can be used independently from the die set itself. Now you'll notice within this collection, let me just pop that back before I lose more dies out of it. You've got this strip down one side. Mine, I've taken out the packaging and I use in my little toolbox all the time. Um, lots and lots of questions on this one. And the answer is really simple. This strip here is a die in its own right. It has a score lines here, here and here. And it is basically creating a stay for you. So if you want to create maybe tent fold cards, which end up being a, a little bit top heavy and you're finding your card is uh, kind of slipping open like so when you're trying to stand it up. 
you fix this side and this side, one to the back of the card, one to the front of the card, obviously like a little M shape once you fold it up along the score lines. And it just keeps those two sides of your card together because obviously having the, the stuck in between, it can't go any further than as stuck. So really, really, really simple on that. Um, Joanne says my multi box has come so I need to watch the YouTube to learn how to make the box yeah we have a YouTube video we actually have quite a lot of videos on YouTube now we have all of our um back catalogue of Facebook lives that we've loaded up there and we've got a few how to's and obviously we are adding more and more as time goes on <laughs> Sue Oxberry says hello darling you look well that's really kind mummy thank you it's probably because I've got my telly makeup on <laughs> later but you know what thank you mum that's really sweet um um, ah, there we go, Fiona. So Fiona joined us uh, on our last Facebook Live and said she she was not feeling very well. She had COVID, but she says, hi, Hannah, from a COVID-free happy bunny. Yay, that's fantastic news, Fiona. Great news that you're feeling better. So this wreath card check. Do you know what's really nice about this? And I don't know whether it's just um, sort of the time of year we're coming into. It really does feel like a lovely sort of spring summer card because you've got obviously this lovely sort of bouncy look to it. You've got lots and lots of apertures in there. You've got cutaways in there. And as we've mentioned, all these filigree elements as well. Also, do think about when we're talking about wreaths and things like that, this would look lovely as Christmas cards. So think about the, um, the wreath maker that we brought you uh, in June last year for our Christmas event, that's going to sit beautifully within this kind of design as well. So the card I'm going to be bringing you will feature the Vernal Blooms wreath and a few other elements as we've discussed. Um, but again, you can then take this tutorial and mix it up for how you wish your card to look afterwards. Now, before we move on to the card demonstration itself, it is really worth noting both the wreath card shape, there's this one I'm working with, and then the Vernal Blooms wreath, which is what I'll be decorating the majority of this card with, are today's deal of the day. So we're doing a double whammy on the deal of the day today. Both of these uh, die sets have 20% off today only being deal of the day. If you're looking for the wreath card shape, the code is 200202. That's 200202. So hop onto our website and type that in and it will bring up this die set here. And then the Vernal Blooms wreath, which is what we'll be using to decorate, is 210506. That's 210506. Both of which have 20% off today only as the deal of the day. So we're doing nice little tie-ins for the deal of the day with our Facebook Live demonstrations. Okay, so how to cut. As you see, I've already got the layers cut, but I will obviously talk through it. This card shape is like the majority of the card shape designs that we do at Carnation Crafts. It will um, create, as we've said, this lovely art shaped design. And all we do, and again, I can't stress this enough, you see me do this in most demonstrations where there is a card shape. The only difference being something like a stepper card um, where you've got a little bit of folding and things like that, or a card like the arrow card where it, it cuts all in one, but then it's obvious with those ones we, where they, they cut all in one as a card base. Oops, we're going to take the outermost die. Okay, you hear me say this for pretty much every demonstration when it comes to a card. That outermost die, like so, with your base and with your lovely filigree arch to the top, we're going to cut it twice. Once for the back of the card, like so, and once for the front of the card. Now, because we're making card bases, we are working with 350 perfect smooth, um, perfect smooth cardstock. So a nice heavyweight cardstock, which means it's going to be substantial to then put your layers on. It's a nice construction weight of card. We've also, at this stage, on the front of the card, chosen one of the little apertures and lined that up for the front, just to create a little cutaway, just to create a little point of interest. Again, the only time I tend to use magnetic um, shims within my die cutting plates is when I'm lining up like this. If I say that, more often than not, I actually stick the dies to the cardstock with repositionable tape as well. So it just gives you the ability to line up perfectly and have this little cutaway to the inside, okay? That's how we cut the card bases. On the reverse of the card, let me flip that over, give that a little newsreader shuffle. You will see 
we've scored that little, open that up, Anna, about half an inch down from one side. So again, it is the same process to create the card bases for most of the frames and most of the cards you see me working with. Along that score line, towards the outer edge, we have placed red liner tape. So again, because we're making a base, we are working with nice strong adhesive tape. And make sure that's just nice and aligned. I'm using the bottom of my multimedia mat to keep those dies all in alignment. That tape, removing the carrier sheet and then smoothing that down, okay? That then creates the front and the back of your card, okay? That process is pretty much the same for most of the card bases we use, okay? On the aperture itself, just because I wanted something a little bit different, I've stuck in place already some uh, clear acetate. Um, normally, if I wasn't doing this just as a demonstration, I'd cut a second layer of the card front and then have that as a sandwich. So I'd stick that over to hide all of the workings for that acetate. But just for the purpose of demonstration, I'm not, I'm not going to do that today. That gives us our base onto which we can start designing our card designs. So if we just take a look, I am going to use all the mats and layers in their entirety. So this, this card design is going to feature the filigree round, the little flourish and the two little corners, both with the filigree and then the mats and layers as well. Now these, I believe, I've cut from the Naughty But Mice um, card stops. This nice sort of blush pink and then this lighter tone of pink. And then the filigree, all these elements you see, the lovely sort of creamy finish, is cut from our Perfect Blush, which is our range of white coloured cardstock. Um, and this one I've cut from the Perfect Blush in the natural, so it gives you this creamy coloured finish. And I just think that works really, really well. So you can see, once we've aligned, the placement for your filigree layers is the same as how the package lays them out, okay? So use the packaging as your guide as well. You do have additional elements, as we've mentioned. You've got these little uh, cutaways and things you could use over the front of your aperture and, of course, your little tag if you wanted to include that too. But essentially, you've got the dies laid out there, including those mats and layers and that filigree, matching the layout for the wreath card shape. Now, let's stick these in place, shall we? I think most of these, yeah, most of these I'm sticking using uh, finger lift tape. That one seems to want to already stick. And all we're doing is taking the carrier sheet of that finger lift tape and folding it over the edge to create little tabs on which we can pull once we've positioned our card in place, okay? So it gives you, just like with the majority of our um, little card designs here, our frames and things like that, and our card bases, it gives you a very, very delicate edge. So your, your map and layer, essentially, your, your spacing around the die itself just works beautifully. I'm just gonna turn this up so I can see those little elements of tape on the inside that I want to remove as well, just to have every, every aspect of this card stuck. I'm just gonna use my pokey tool to get in there and remove the carrier sheet, oops, off that side as well. There we go. Okay, so that's your first layer done. Don't ever be intimidated by the die sets. Even when you've got lots and lots of dies in place, once you start working with them, they are pretty self-explanatory as to where they all sit and how they all work together. Let's just stick the rest. Again, and with finger lift tape, we don't want anything too raised at this point. Because obviously, when we come to add in the embellishments on top, those are going to be sort of the focal points. We kind of just want these sitting nicely in the background to create our backdrop for our designs. So once again, using that same colour palette of that lighter pink, as I say, I think it's from the Perfect Papers and Naughty But Mice. And just lining up the corners each side like so. The filigree itself, because obviously it's more dainty, I've stuck that in place using our everyday uh, clear glue. And that just nestles in nicely into its frame as well. Same with this little element, just lining it up so you've got equal spacing all the way around and like so, okay? The final little element for these layers is going to be our wreath, if you like. 
and I'm gonna just make sure I'm aligning it on the top. You've got this wonderful sort of scalloped edge and you can see the larger, the sort of bigger pointy areas, if you like, are the ones that then line up top and bottom all the way around, aligning that to the aperture because it's the same size aperture as what I've cut to the center and using that finger lift tape to just stick in place like so. Okay, so very quickly, this kind of card design comes together very, very pretty. So go around and gently peel away the rest of that carry sheet on the finger lift tape, like so. Just make sure we've got a nice, nice stick between all the layers there. And then just gently push that into place, okay? So that creates your card base. Now at this stage, you could absolutely say, do you know what, that's done. I'm happy with how that looks. And it just looks so, so pretty. Fiona has made a really good point there. You could take absolutely this little section here, this filigree section, and it would make a great tiara. Think about mixing it in with other collections like Fairy Tale Day. Every single collection when it comes to Carnation Crafts is designed in-house uh, by the same design team as well. So Nick, head of um, creative director, sorry. He, he and his team take these sketches from initial conception all the way through to actually creating the dies, then through to the artwork as well, which means you get this wonderful signature, signature style running, a theme running through each and every collection, which means they all work beautifully together. Now, if you wanted something quite pared back, you could take one of the tag designs. So this is also from the Full of Love collection. Notice how the filigree all works in together. We've cut it from those same colours we've used in the matte background. And you could absolutely just pop that on the front, perhaps one flower, maybe from the midi florals, for example, and that's your card done. Really, really nice way of working with this. However, because we want to mix things up a little bit, and I'm really keen to show you just how well all different collections work together. How about that? That is the wreath from the Vernal Blooms collection. And look how beautifully it sits nestled in the midst of that aperture created by the wreath card shape. Now I'm just gonna grab, if I've got some near me, yeah. I'm gonna grab some red liner tape on this, I think. If I can grab it. There we go. Yes, here we go. Because I'm sticking this wreath element onto essentially acetate at the background, I'm not going to use glue because it would just squidge everywhere. There are glues you can use on your acetate, but I do prefer using my red liner tape. Um, again, nice strong adhesive. The same tape I used on the score line for the card itself. So I'm just going to gently peel away a section. And I, because they're only little tiny bits, I'm going to have to be careful with placement on this. So I'm just taking my scissors. And I'm going to take just a section of tape so I can work with it a little bit easier. And we're going to take off tiny little bits, okay, really tiny wee little bits. Don't worry too much if these little bits do poke over the edges of where you're attaching, okay, because we can go around very cleverly and hide any of this once we start building that little wreath up, for example. Would help if I could cut the tape. There we go. And, oh, I've lost that bit. See, I should have probably stuck this before <laughs> coming alive. But you know what? It is what it is. Uh, taking a little, yeah, that's, I'm trying to catch it on the end of my finger before it, it flies away. They're so delicate, these little pieces. And then I'm just using them to stick into the little cross sections. Like so, I'm not gonna attach much, probably just four because when we start building the layers onto them, I'm pretty confident the layers are gonna hold everything in place. This is just basically like a little anchor, if you like, all the way around. A little bit there, just on the compass points, just like so. Now the real feat is trying to get the, uh, <laughs> the backing paper off of these, isn't it? That's gonna be interesting. There we go. Come on, little little red line tape. Again, talking to it, I do feel really does help in situations such as these. There we go. Okay, so I'll just put that little extra bit off to one side. I can use that on another project. And what I'm going to do is just really sort of uh, burnish that down using my thumbnail and then tear or peel, I should say. Peel's a little bit more of a, a softer word, isn't it? Take the carrier sheet off 
each of these sections. So burnishing it is key because that means the tapes are nice and stuck to the vignette rather than trying to stick to me and peel away those little layers. If you're looking for a little tip to get rid of those tiny little bits uh, that cling to you from the red liner tape, a really great little way of using it is um, with uh, either like baby powder or talc powder or even, you know, the um, little bags that we use, um, what would you call them, anti-static bags from the um, stamping and things like that. That would then take away a lot of the sticky. Um, okay, now... This is the fun part, okay? So we've got our base, we've got our, our general idea. Let's bring in just a whole selection of vignettes. Now, if you need a hand with how we cut our vignettes, we do have how-to videos on both large size vignettes um, and mirrored vignettes and also standard vignettes. And when we talk about vignettes, it's essentially this coloured artwork, um, again, created by the team at Carnation. Uh, that can be used in addition to your dies. You lay your dies over the top, pop it through your die cutting machine and it will cut out all these tremendous, basically little mini works of art uh, to allow you to create wonderful uh, colour and dimension and scenes within your card designs. So we've got greenery in here, we've got berries, we've got conkers, we've got candles, we've got flourishes, all sorts of things to build up our wreath, okay? Now with these... Oops, every time I add something to my card, I am going to use my foam mat and my ball tools to just shape them out. So let's start with a few of these berries. And just by shaping them, you see how it curves the edges. It brings these little die cuts to life, just giving them that shaping, giving them that texture. Uh, let's go with the flowers as well. So depending on which way you want the shaping to go here, um, I'm using it from the outside in and it's just balling up those flowers there. Same with these little flowers here, just curving those petals around. And I'm using sort of the appropriate size tool, if you like, for each of the sizes there. These little berries make go with a little bit of balling as well. I love the shine on these. The, the artwork makes them look so realistic, doesn't it? It's so pretty. Uh, conkers might feature. We'll see when we come to the end. So let's use our larger ball tool just to shape. And then through the middle of that one as well. I tend to, when it comes to card making, get all of my die cuts uh, prepared. All of my little uh, vignettes prepared, shaped, tweaked, whatever it may be ready so when I'm in the flow of creating a card it's just a simple case of grabbing what I want to work with and then adding it to the design so here even things like these little leaves and things like that uh, rather than using my ball tool I've opted to use my uh, pokey tool and I'm just using my pokey tool my thumb over the top and then just twisting and turning the leaves again even just little subtle things like this really do make a difference to the overall finish of your card. I think it was a lady called Margaret uh, the other day on group who um, posted she had used the ball tools and the foam mat for the first time and she said she's never going back. It made such a difference to her decoupage layers and to her finish of her cards that just brought it to life. Okay, so... Oh, Mandy, really good point there. Thank you for sharing that. Um, she says, I use a sheet of kitchen roll on the backing of red liner tape, so it sticks like magic. Yeah, perfect. It's all these little tips that are so lovely to share, aren't they, with each other? Okay, where to start? Where to start? I think let's just plunge in. Let's grab something. One of these little designs. And let's just lift and tuck. I kind of need to decide which way I'm going with this, but I think it's just one of those that's going to evolve with time. Um, just... A case of lifting. Now, if you're having trouble getting your finger underneath to lift, you can always use a pokey tool like so and tuck. Not all of them need to be tucked in. Really, the idea is just to follow this kind of wreath shape. It's quite um, a nice way of crafting because eventually, you know, all of the little ends and things will be tucked in and hidden. I think I want to go kind of this way, but I mean, who knows? It could end up looking completely different by the end. That's a nice little berries and things on that side, perhaps some long line florals. You know, it really is up to you. Now, because we are working with what we call our mirrored vignettes, you see each time I turn these over, you've got the same 
colour on the front as what you have on the back, it gives you options. Because obviously this little one curves this way, but because we've got those mirrored, we can curve it around the other way as well. Now we get a lot of questions, how do we make the backs of our um, mirrored vignettes look the same as the front? Well, essentially they're never gonna look exactly the same because when you're cutting, the beveled edges of the die cut down into the front of the vignette. But what you can do, as you've just seen me do with the ball torn things, ball them out and it will give them more shape and texture. And to avoid anything whereby you're transferring perhaps the cut lines from your plates and things onto the back of the vignettes, use Cut Tidy. Use Cut Tidy sandwiched between the back of your, your die cuts and your plates, and it just tidies everything up, as the name would suggest. Let's go in with a floral as well. You see how now you're picking up those colours in the pinks with the pinks in the background. We've got little vines here, which I thought would work so beautifully for adding in a little bit of texture. All nice and woven up. These are from the, the Midi Florals one, um, but I'm not obviously going to use them in their entirety. I'm going to really snip into these because look how by just taking a little corner of this, you can add flourishes over the top of your designs like so. It might be that I end up, you know, taking one side and just going to town on one side with the berries. Because this is quite an organic process, it's a nice way of crafting. It's up to you to find how you want these to look in your your finished design. Lots and lots of different ways of crafting. You could load one side of the wreath, you could do the whole wreath. It really, really is up to you. I want to include the anemones because I think they're going to be really pretty, but again, I might cut and trim the areas off here. And I think I might end up possibly using this sentiment, maybe not, who knows, we'll see how it goes. Once we are getting to a stage where I'm quite happy with how this is looking, might swap those flowers to the front perhaps. Yeah, that's possibly a little bit better. We can start sticking. So for this, I'm gonna use, or this stage, I'm gonna use a combination of our everyday glue and also my pin flare. I'm just coming to use my pin flare for the first time today. So I'm just gonna take the little plug of glue out of the nozzle, just using my pokey tool, like so. Get rid of the plug over there. And then that means the rest of the glue is ready. Whenever you finish using your glue, just squidge a little bit out of the end of the nozzle there, and then that makes the plug easier to remove when you come to work with it. Come away, little, little thing. I don't want you in there quite yet because I want you at the front, so I'm just going to use my tweezers to tweak you out. There we go. Placing elements down like so, and let's go ahead and stick. So pin flare glue gel just on the reverse. Wherever you've um, added in a lot of sculpture, wherever you've added in a lot of height to your design, concentrate your glue in that area because it will then keep the height in that area as well. Because we're then layering it over these other elements, most of these other elements will then be caught into the glue. Uh, that little element is gonna need a little bit of added extra. I'm gonna grab some glue just off to one side. Hopefully there's some in this bottle, otherwise I'm going to have to... Oh yeah, this one, grab my pin flag, this is what I have to have. Most of my um, kit is packed because we are heading over to Crate and Craft just after this uh, Facebook Live. We have shows this evening, at myself at 5.15, um, with the Especially For You collection. Uh, it was supposed to be Just Passing By, but as you probably know, Just Passing By sold out... Um, during the repeats on the on the first night and then Carla will be with you at uh, six this evening just after me uh, with the launch or the sneak peek the early bird if you like of the um, new USB as well which is great which gives you something to look forward to there just a little bit of pin flare on the backs of those flowers um, a couple of people asking, I can't see the question, the initial question. Let's have a look. Um, where can I buy the wreath card on its own? The wreath card is today's deal of the day. Uh, Joanna on our website, carnationcrafts.co.uk. If you head to our website, click on the big banner that runs across most of the pages and it will take you to today's deal of the day, uh, which is the wreath card. And then of course the, the Vernal Blooms wreath that I'm working with here as well. Um, they are on 20% off 
for today's deal but remember today is just literally for 24 hours only so don't don't miss out okay just going to start tucking in a few little leaves uh, i think more berries would be appropriate because i think these are really really cute ah carnation crafts i'm not sure who is on carnation crafts i think it's probably harvey thank you very much if it is uh who says here's the link to today's deal of the day read card shape on discount today only perfect thanks guys thanks for adding that in and lifting and tucking on behind that little bit as well when it comes to lifting and tucking you see it's my favorite thing to do when it comes to carnation crafts because there's so many beautiful ways of adding in detail adding in design adding in dimension to your card makes and it's it's a lot of fun discovering new ways of working with them as well um it's quite fun like i've done here um as we mentioned at the start of the show we're using a, a few different die sets so we've got um as i mentioned equinox blooms in here which features on tonight's usb we've got um vernal blooms obviously we've got hedgerow harvest and we've got a few little elements from the colour of autumn as well and having that ability to mix and match gives your older die sets almost like a new lease of life doesn't it it's it's discovering new ways of putting these all together and adding these in so here i've added in a long line of leaves again just tucking lifting and tucking them behind using the glue there just to, to tuck the stems in but i'm following the line that's already set up by the wreath itself and actually what I want to do is start coming down this way I think I'm going to end up coming up and around as well and I don't want to kind of run out of die cuts I don't want to go too over the top but I do want to add in enough that it it kind of hugs that wreath it makes a feature of that wreath so I'm using a combination of my uh, wet glue here my tweezers because I'm working with fine little areas and my pokey tool to just lift and tuck but you see how we mentioned all of those little areas whereby we use the um, red liner tape are being hidden by everything we're doing here. I think another little leaf, another little leaf, which leaf do we want to use? Perhaps a, a green. And then just a little bit like so. So it's just a case of sitting back, having a look, seeing where we need to fill areas where we want to add in design like so. We definitely want some more of these berries going on because I think they are so fun. Love the colours of these. Love the rich colours against that um, sort of blush pink backdrop as well. I think it works perfectly. Now you notice when it comes to gluing, I tend to only glue just the tips of uh, most things whenever I'm crafting actually. Um, enough to anchor it, enough to have it uh, settled and secure. Because we're adding lots of layers, I already know the layers on top are going to hold the layers underneath as well. It gives you additional support and extra support there. But by just gluing the edges, you then have this wonderful lift from the rest of the areas, which creates a lovely sense of movement to your designs as well. Let's go in with more berries. I'm just checking the balance to make sure I've got the right sort of um, fullness on one side, a little bit more sparse on the other, but that's okay. That's that's fine. We can add to that if we want to. A little bit of pimple again on the backs of these berries, and we're going to lift, and we're going to tuck. Again, just hiding those little stems underneath one another to create this wreath design. Uh, what else do we want in here? We want some long line leaves. I think just to mirror that finish there, I think we're going to come to an end on this one here. Remember, using those mirrored vignettes, we can use the, the leaves there in both directions. And just gluing the tips to create this wreath design. Being quite generous with the amount I'm tucking behind. Which is quite fun. A few more little leaves, I feel. Uh, I need this kind of leaf colour up in here just to create a little bit of balance and create a little bit of continuity between the sections on the wreath itself. Let's just tuck that one in behind. The tweezers do make it far easier to work. Uh, we need this kind of colour leaf coming in on this little bottom edge here. So let's use this little oak. Yep, let's use it that way round. So you've got the interest of the 
it's almost like the filigree edge poking out of one side and just adding it in now i know a lot of these tutorials are literally me once i've stuck everything the layers and everything me just then lifting and tucking but i i want to bring them to you in the hopes that it gives you a little bit of confidence to try grabbing at your perhaps older um vignettes perhaps your older collections and just having a little play with them just building that confidence to work with them have a little play mix and match your collections because as we've said they really do work so beautifully together just, just lift a little bit more green in there that little area could do with a little tuck in that's perfectly placed for this little one having a nice amount of vignettes cut ready you know sculpted just in front of you allows you much more of a creative process as well you're not having to stop at stages and think right well I'm, I'm, i've got a little gap here i need something to fill it what are we going to go with having them there just creates a really nice process where you can keep going in and thinking right i've got that little area there that could do with filling i've got this i've got that and it just adds in now i think for this one i do want to include these little red berries because i love the shine to them but i'm just going to trim them down because remember when it comes to carnation crafts you don't have to use everything in its entirety you are more than welcome to snip away and make them your own just neating up anything I've snipped away and we are gonna just add in excuse me whilst I grab a little sip of drink there there we go I feel like I've, I've failed today I haven't got any snacks in front of me normally I have snacks during the Facebook live <laughs> I keep looking for my snacks and I don't have any which is quite disappointing what snacks do you like <laughs> I know, I know for me, um, at the moment, this is going to sound terrible because we've only just had Christmas, but I'm a massive fan of mini eggs. Uh, I'm sure there's other names of other chocolate coated eggs in, in the marketplace. But for me, literally, I think it was, I can't remember, I think it was something like the 2nd of January, Simon came home from just nipping to the shops and was like, guess what I've got you? And I was like, oh no, what's it going to be? And it's literally mini eggs. So from now until Easter pretty much live on mini eggs in the craft <laughs> it's such a terrible thing to admit really isn't it but i love them i just love them i think they're absolutely glorious and what do you guys like snacking when you are crafting that i think it's the rule isn't it you just have to snack when it comes to crafting it's just the two go so wonderfully together don't they okay let's have a look at this little line here let's just snip do i want to snip there no i think i want to snip there actually um, so I've taken one trail there. I want to add in this one, but I just feel that probably that little bump is a little bit too long. So again, we can adjust it for our needs. Let's snip away at that leaf. Oops. And then snip away at that leaf, or that stem, should I say, there. Okay, adding in these little flourishes, adding in these little trails. As I say, this one uh, in particular comes from the, the midi floral midi arrangement flowers uh, set one uh, so the original set we brought you back in i think it was september possibly august um but yeah just these little trails just these little edges just these little tendrils just add in those fine flourishes to your design um Ah, oh, Audrey's just said, love the way this has come together. Thank you, Audrey. It's, it's just a little bit of fun. It's just a way of sitting and enjoying and having a look at what, what die cuts we've got in front of us, what we could use, what we could embellish, what we could change up. You know, it's, it's just options. And I think Carnation do this so well where they've got all of these beautiful little, little die cuts and things. It just lends itself so well to crafting, essentially. Uh, a little added extra tentacle. It is worth, if you've got the time, it really is worth having a little stash of vignettes cut, ready to go, and then just taking the time to enjoy the process of layering up. It is like being, I know I've said it before, but it is like being a florist in that you're taking elements, you're adding in design, you're adding in detailing. Anywhere where you're looking, you're thinking it just needs a little added extra Look how just by adding in a few little flourishes, it changes that layer up. It changes that little area beautifully. I think 
I'm quite happy with how that's looking. I do want to add the candles in because I think they're a lot of fun and they could add in another dimension to your design. I'm going to remove them from the, the wall bracket. As I said, this is from the, the season decor of Equinox Bloom. So this will feature in, in tonight's USB as well. So it could be that you perhaps use these sort of things within that collection too. Do I want the big one or do I want the small ones? See, again, it's choice because I've got them in front of me. They're there and I can mix and match and see whether I want them included. I'm just going to place it and have a look. It might be that I don't go with those, but I thought it might be quite fun. Yeah, I quite like that, actually. Let's go with that. Again, personal choice. At the end of the day, it's your craft. It's what you're working with. You don't have to include these sort of elements. If you want to, go ahead and do so because it just adds in little extras, little fun things for people to discover when they're viewing your card. Just tucking that little candle in there. I'm just going to get my tweezers and poke that down so you haven't got any holes sort of between where the leaves are and where the candles sit. That's quite fun. I think that one will be enough actually. I think that looks quite nice. I'm going to leave the conkers because I think they're going to be a bit heavy. The only place I would probably put them, if I wanted to go all out autumn, I'd probably take the florals away and have the conkers just sitting there because I think that's quite fun. Maybe a little mouse interacting with them in the centre. But I think that looks good. Sue says, oh Hannah, I'm with you with the mini eggs. <laughs> She says, could you hurry up? As my just passing by has arrived. <laughs> I love it. See, that's really funny. Um, maybe I do want florals. Who knows? Oh, my goodness. You know, I mean, that would look really lovely as well. More on a focal point of your flowers rather than little mini ones. In fact, I'm going to do that. I like that. So, again, because you're using pin flare, because you're using all these elements, you've got the opportunity to mix and match. You've got the, the way of just adding in detailing. The little leaves here I'm going to put in my stash to use on another day and I've just taken the just the fine tip of my scissors here and snipping you know it's so funny I could get lost for hours in the just the process of layering because I think it's just a fun way to spend some time it's a really really nice relaxing feel you're not pressured you're not having to rush you just add in the placements and then see how they look a little bit of pin flare for the back of these. This is a nice larger size decoupage layer. This is from um, Colour of Autumn. But by having that sort of just a bit bigger element to your design, it grounds that corner of the wreath. It adds in this nice sort of feel whereby the rest of the wreath then comes together. And I think that looks really pretty. Uh, you guys might choose to do something different. Do you know what? Go for it. They are your die cuts at the end of the day yours to do with as you wish. I'll use one final little flourish just here because I feel those those florals just need grounding a little bit with some leaves. Just adding in a little bit of glue, lifting and tucking. There we go, that feels better. I love that, I think that's looking really really pretty. Now it could be that we include the um, little sentiment at the bottom, you could use it in inside. So if you're creating the wreath, tuck it in before you start using it. Um, I quite like it at the bottom. What do you guys think? Do you think we should include that at the bottom there or do you think we should leave it off? Possibly leave it off, but it gives you options on how to include if you want to at another stage. I'm quite happy with how that's looking. I think that looks a little bit of fun. You've got elements in there. You've got detailing in there. Remember that card base that we put together at the very start of the demonstration, the wreath card shape is available as today's deal of the day with 20% off, as is the wreath, the vernal wreath there as well. That's also 20% off. Nice way of concentrating a little bit of colour to the centre of your design. Sam says it looks beautiful at the bottom. Well, if Sam says it looks beautiful at the bottom, let's go with it. <laughs> A little bit of pin flare along. See how I'm looping the pin flare over to give it a little bit of lift? It gives you height then. Karen also agrees bottom. There you go. Let's pop that in. Looping the pin flare over like that gives you a, a higher dimension to it. 
I've stamped to the centre of the tag. Thank you so much. As we mentioned, that tag is part of the uh, Full of Love collection as well. But I think that card's come together really pretty. And I've got extras left over if I want to then add in more should I wish to. Let's just turn that around so you can see from this direction as well. What do you guys think? What florals, what additions, what details are you going to include when you get your Full of Love wreath card shape home? Today's deal of the day, 20% off. Code for it is 200202. That's 200202. And of course, if you then want to embellish it, and remember, I've used other sets as well, um, but initially um, uh, quite a few of those little elements come from the Vernal Blooms wreath which is also available today is today's deal of the day code for that is 210506 if you hop onto our website click on deal of the day it will take you through to today's deal of the day sam says can we have a closer look there you go there's detailing in the wreath itself what i will do as i always do with each one of these uh, cards that we create during the during the facebook shows i will take a photo i will upload it to uh, my facebook page and then i'll pop it on the group the carnation crafters group as well for you guys to have a good look at um all that's left to say is thank you very much for joining me today our next facebook show is the 26th oh it's an exciting one we will be doing a delivered in style which is going to be launching very soon on the carnation website don't forget to sign up for your uh, newsletters as well to be kept up to date with all the latest release information um i will be back on create and craft this afternoon at 5 15 with um possibly some elements from just passing by but the show will be a majority of especially for you so it's a back to air uh, carla will be launching the for the occasion usb straight after me on create and craft at six o'clock tonight as well don't forget to sign up for the newsletter head on over to our group carnation crafters and check out the events page as well here on our facebook brand page to be kept up to date with all the latest facebook shows as well thank you guys for joining me hope you take care stay safe and until next time See you later. Bye-bye.